In this screencast, we're going to cover three more methods of tuning. The first one is called field tuning. So, if you're out in the field and you have a system that responds very quickly, response times on the order of like 10 minutes or less, you can use this trial and error method, which is called field tuning. And this is effective for PI control. And it's also faster than the two previous methods we just talked about. Actually, it's faster than uh, Ziegler Nichols. Cohen and Kuhn is fine as long as you have a first order plus dead time model um, and then it works, right? So if you have a first order plus dead time model, you can do Cohen and Kuhn tuning, but then it just might not work very well. And then you might want to um, do some field tuning on it anyway. So the way to do it, <clears throat> the way to do this, this method field tuning is first you use proportional only action. You use some sort of initial estimate of your proportional um, constant. So in this case, one over your uh, process constant gain, process gain is often a good start. So you, you'll use that and you will uh, perform a set point step change. And when you do that, you will continually increase KC and perform another set point step change until you uh, finally get the kind of desired behavior that you want, such as quarter amplitude decay. So you will be doing a series of set point step change experiments. Now, if you're using a P-only controller, then you're done. You're fine. You've already found the behavior that you want. And so really, this is just trial and error. Now, if you're using a PI controller, what you'll want to do then is you'll want to tune your tau i. <clears throat> so now you'll switch to proportional integral, integral control. And to do that, first you decrease your KC by 10%. Then you use some initial estimate of tau i. Tau i equaling to 5 times the process time constant is often a good start as your initial estimate. So again, you'll go back and do some more set point step changes. And after you do them, you will decrease tau i until first offset is eliminated efficiently and you get back to your desired behavior as you had before, before you added your integral control and decreased KC by 10%. So if you wanted quarter amplitude decay, then when you finally reach quarter amplitude decay by decreasing tau i, then you can stop. So this is just kind of a trial and error method to, to tune your KC and your tau i for proportional integral, integral control. Now PID controllers are often not applied to fast responding loops, so a lot of the times tau d is not specified in the field tuning. Sorry, a lot of times you don't use that, so because of that tau d is not specified. Now the next method of tuning is called auto-tune variation. So this is the case in which you have a system which is slow responding. And if it's slow responding, then you really can't do these kinds of trial and error methods um, in any pre appreciable amount of time. So it's highly inefficient and time consuming. And so you, you will use this auto-tune variation method, which can actually can be very fast. So first, you want your system to be at some sort of steady state. Um, your controller signal at steady state being C0 and your, um, your controlled variable at steady state being y, y0. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to do another set point step change. And you'll do it <clears throat> by making your controller uh, output be increased by some value h. Or I guess in this graph over here, it's been decreased first. It doesn't matter which one you choose, right? So you change your, your um, controller output by some value h. Right, so switch it down to there. And when that happens, eventually your, um, your controlled variable will start to change as well. When your controlled variable reaches some um, significant amount of change, which you decide, it doesn't really matter, but you just decide it to be some value, then what you'll do is at that point, you will um, actually, this, because there's dead time in here, when you start to see the changes when you actually do the switch, right? So when you start to see the, your controlled variable start to change, that's when you do the switch from, in this graph, C0 minus H to C0 plus H. So you make the switch back up to there. When that happens, of course, the controlled variable, if there's dead time in the system, it's starting to do its own thing, and then it turns back around. When your um, controlled variable gets back to the original steady state, you do the switch again. So in this case, it would be from C0 plus H back down to C0 minus H. 
it'll, the um, controlled variable, because you have a slow system, will continue to go up and then it'll come back down because of probably of dead time. And eventually it gets back to steady state again. Right? And when that happens, you do the switch again from what was C0 minus H to C0 plus H. And it'll, so in doing this, you'll cause the controlled variable to oscillate up and down because you've made your controller signal go up and down like this over and over and over again. So you repeat these steps with C switching alternately H above and then H below C0 every time your controlled variable Y crosses your original steady state Y0. After you observe three to four cycles of this, what happens is that the oscillations will start to um, settle down to be repeatable and then you can get your KU, which is calculated according to this formula here, your ultimate um, controller gain. And you can read the value of A off of the graph of the data. So your value of A is how far above your set point does your controller um, controlled variable get before it starts to turn back around again. Or vice versa, it should be symmetric, so how far below um, is another way you could measure it. And of course, H is the value that you've changed your controller signal by. So you calculate your ultimate gain according to this formula. And then your ultimate period is how long did it take you to switch? So the period for switching would be from, from this point to the next uh, similar point in the next wavelength. Now that will give you your ultimate period or your ultimate gain. So once you have those, you can use something like Ziegler, Nichols, or any other similar method that would use ultimate period or ultimate gain. Once you have your Ziegler, Nichols um, tuning parameter, you can um, fine tune your controller using this parameter FT as before. So that's probably the most complicated tuning method that I want to show you. Now the last tuning method would be PID tuning. So PID, tu PID tuning is um, often only a sluggish processes because a lot of times you won't add derivative control to a fast responding process. And this is more difficult because you, now you have a third tuning parameter to worry about. So what's recommended is to extend this ATV method that I just described to you. So first of all, you tune the PI controller according to ATV. You add derivative action by setting tau D equals to PU divided by eight. Then you adjust KC and tau D on the fly by increasing them by the same factor until the desired dynamic behavior is achieved. So there's a good deal of trial and error in this. So because of this, it's actually best to have some accurate simulation of your model. So then you can just do this very quickly on your computer and then have a good initial estimate of what your PID tuning parameters should be. But of course, note that more than 90% of all industrial applications use PI instead of PID control. And so PID tuning is not as common.